Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes back Niklas of Spelljammer. What's up, man? I'm doing well. Well and very well. I'm really glad to hear that. I hope everybody in the band is okay. As we were just saying offline, you know, we're all kind of collectively going through this craziness. It's going into year two. It just is what it is. But um, generally speaking, I'm very positive and upbeat that eventually things are going to start coming back. And in the meantime, I'm really thankful that we have this brand new album of the Seal Trip to discuss coming out on Riding Easy, the best labels in the world for this kind of music. What a fantastic record, man. Uh, obviously, you couldn't uh, foresee this whole world unraveling like it has when you wrote this it is a very fitting emotional record for these times that's probably true uh, we had no idea because we recorded it in like 2019 so but i mean catastrophes are always around the corner so man is doomed to screw up over and over again so indeed indeed without being too uh dark about it i i i've joked often that uh all the metal bands collectively predicted this. <laughs> We've been begging for an apocalypse for 50 years since Black Sabbath, and now we got one. Yeah, after 100 years. <laughs> right. Good times, though, man. Uh, this record's amazing. Uh, it's it's definitely you. a step over Ancient Days, I, which I liked also a lot. Um, but I love this record. I listened to it a few times all the way through, and it's just a very good record to just kind of like shut everything down and just focus on it. It's definitely not background music. It's definitely, you know, kind of, I felt like it demanded my attention to spend some time with it as opposed to put it on and forget about it. I think it kind of, uh, the right. journey of the music kind of brings you closer to the album. Well, thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, obviously, don't want to make background music. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I uh we're we're happy with it. Uh we're glad that it's finally done and finally coming out. And yeah, I think it's somewhat of a step forward from from the last album and the album before that. I don't know if it's all that different. I think it's easier for other people to to maybe assess that than it is for us. But it's, right. uh, I mean, it's so open for interpretation, I guess. it's. <laughs> we're just glad if, right. if people enjoy it, you know. It's, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, people are going to dig this, man. People are going to really dig this record. Um, the title track is epic, but the whole record is really strong. Obviously, it's a very uh, deliberate opening of Bellwether. And uh, I really like, I've probably Among the Holy is my favorite single track, but it's all, it's, it's really strong, the whole thing. Obviously, when you're, like you said, you're very close to it. So maybe when you guys are writing, um, do you, do you write with a certain, uh, you know, tract in mind or with these, uh, is it, is the final track listing the order they were written in? I wonder sometimes, I think sequencing is kind of a lost art on albums. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'd like to say that it was, you know, all planned out, but no, it's when we were done, we had, you know, we had five songs and then we had six songs with the, the instrumental peregrine, but we had another order and then we changed it. We figured that silent rift was a pretty strong closer Instead of, you know, you don't want to close an album with a mellow piece of a song. And they certainly weren't written in that order either. Um, it's such, <laughs> but no, that was, that was not a long time ago. Wrote it, it, wrote it, but it's actually, that's a, like a final detail. 2019 no. is when we piece it together, recorded it. And that's a year and a half ago. So I can't even remember which song was first, but... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It, I hear you. Right, uh, sort of along those same lines, though. Obviously, since it was kind of you guys were sitting on the record for a while, and you know that's fine. Do you have a? Do you look at it a little differently now? As to you know, obviously you're relieved it's cu it's coming out March fifth, as I said on Riding Easy. Do you feel like it's um, sort of changed it all for you now, as opposed to when you were you know had just completed it a year ago or well, over a year I would, ago? I, I wouldn't say that we've been sitting on it. <clears throat> It's just we recorded it like a year in, in the summer of 2019, and then mixing took forever. And then 
it's like everything after that just you know takes forever and it probably mm-hmm. takes us longer than most people because we're never in a rush and <laughs> that's i guess the spell jammer way to not rush things and i mean when it's done it's done and then finally it, it was done and then we were in the middle of a pandemic and uh, it takes like months to get the album ready for release printing and all that so yeah i wouldn't say we like shelved it and waited we just moved slowly toward this i like that i like uh, being deliberate i think uh you know the whole world isn't too much of a rush especially with technology uh, although i'm grateful to be able to chat with you and see you and oh, yeah. talk now here i think the whole speed of life we maybe uh, uh lost the script a little bit about art and creativity and things. And uh, I'm glad that the band is kind of a united team about just kind of, you know, taking what time is needed to, till you're satisfied. It's hard. I know the industry is also not, the music industry is not so artist friendly. They would like you to churn things out. Obviously Riding Easy is, you know, a very artist centric label. They seem to be tuned into who they sign and why, but uh, it's great to hear you say, you know, like that the band is very deliberate and takes whatever time you guys decide you need that's that's fine yeah and they definitely never rushed us to put out a new album we just went at it at our own pace and when it was done they were ready to put it out so that felt nice nice was the did the mix take a while was there a specific reason or were you guys looking for something specifically that you wanted to make sure the album had compared to the last one or uh, we did we did a mix and we weren't happy with it and it just took time and then Robert ended up mixing it himself so and then you worked with our buddy Epson on the mastering uh, we're huge I'm sure as you are a huge fan of Monolord they are you know, he's a legend and they're a great band uh, it's great working with him I know that he's doing a lot more production side stuff. Uh, the last few years so that's pretty cool uh, it sounds very the very clean you know pristine record for such a dirty riffs and and uh subject matter is a very tight sounding record oh yeah definitely uh we're we were happy with uh, the mastering i like to say that a good mastering is uh, when you don't notice it when you don't like interfere with the mix because the mix is the sound that's the album so he did a good job because I don't notice it. That's what it's supposed to be. So, yeah, we're very pleased. You talked a little bit about this before. Do you guys jam? Do you guys bring in riffs or songs kind of completed? Uh, or is it more like, you know, you guys just kind of jam around and come up with stuff together? I would say that we almost never come up with songs together. We write riffs me and Robert at home and send it back and forth to each other. And anything that's good sticks and anything that doesn't immediately, you know, excite you ends up in a folder. And now we have folders of (laughs) riffs, so many riffs. And sometimes you go back and you find something and like, why didn't we make a song of this? This is awesome which has happened on all the albums, old riffs. Like, this is good. Who put this in a folder? Like, <laughs> this is good. So, nice. Yeah. I, don't, I feel like every guitarist and bassist has like a, a bag of riffs or a box of riffs in their mind. Oh, yeah. Metaphysical, a metaphysical box of riffs to yeah. pull out. Oh, you remember that one that we never finished? Here's a good one. Um, right. Some, you know. some, some people don't record anything. I think it was Al Chisneros who said that he never recorded anything. If it was good enough, it will come back. That's a scary thought. <laughs> it's risky, I think. Yeah. Like, I don't oh, want to really good. Should uh, I yeah. record it? I'm like, that's, like, yeah, that sounds, back? I don't know. Not Should to I mention that it? those guys, those guys might be uh, under, under the influence of something. So <laughs> they might yeah, not I would, remember I would it. I would record if I were him. <laughs> I'm not questioning. I'm not questioning Al as our Lord and Savior on the bass and vocals, no. but um, yeah, wow. <laughs> it seems to work for them. Yeah. I would record everything. Um, 
it does seem to work for them. No arguing with that. It would be nice to get those guys back at some point. I know they're on kind of a break right now. Oh, yeah. But yeah, man, this is a terrific album. And uh, I don't know specifically if it it feels like a concept record. I don't know if you want to talk too much about that as just a kind of con- conceptually or vocals or lyrics. But like it does feel like it is like it has the makings. It feels like a like a very broad Maybe it's tied together uh, on purpose as a whole, not the tracks themselves. But like, like I said, I really like the immerse idea of an immersive listening experience for this record. Yeah, I have gotten that question before, and it's not meant to be a concept album at all. Uh, I we've never made a, a concept album. I love concept albums, and maybe someday we'll make one like Tommy or Lion Lies Down on Broadway or like any of those great concept albums. But um, I mean, there are themes that kind of tie it together, I guess. And Ancient of Days was pretty much the same. All the songs were kind of not, they, they didn't stray from each other too much. I don't know. Maybe the sound just makes it sound like nothing really sticks out. And that maybe makes it feel like a concept, but it's not intentional at all. Right on, right on. That's fair. And then, uh, you know, of course, uh, Spelljammer, you guys have always had fantastic artwork. So this album is no different. Uh, it's very interesting kind of like a very sort of retro and futurist at the same time, which I love always. And uh, right in line, like you guys said, you guys always knock it out with the artwork and not even just the album covers, shirts, posters, thing, tour posters is always like a very high value. I think you guys uh, really care about the aesthetics of the band. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think that's, that's important. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to put out something that doesn't, like you can't identify with and, you want to sort of promote it in the right way. And I think artwork and both for albums and uh, posters or whatever, it's, yeah, you try to maintain some sort of, I don't want to say image, but something that's relatable to Spelljammer. Nice. Yeah. And fans, fans tend to gravitate to that stuff too. Anyway, they, they get, roped in sometimes by the visual uh especially in this genre where uh you know you guys kind of stand apart but there's a lot of bands that are doing like a very samey type of thing and so i always feel like spell jammer you guys are very unique to yourselves which is important we tried right from the start not to be generic uh i don't know if we always succeed but that's definitely uh we, we don't want that. It's That's boring. Uh, but, uh, yeah, when you, when you put out vinyls, you, I mean, I like vinyls. And when I was a kid, you know, you bought a vinyl and you got home and you were sitting there reading the liner notes and like forever because it, it's exciting. So you want to put out something that looks cool. Yeah. Right on. What was the uh, first vinyl you remember getting as a kid? Ooh, that was probably not something cool. Uh, no judgments. <laughs> well, we all have those records. I think one of my first, I don't know if it was the first, but one of my earliest vinyls was uh, Michael Jackson's uh, Thriller. I still have it. Yes. I still love it. It's an awesome, awesome album. It is a 10 of 10, one of the best records oh, ever. Definitely. I was actually, I was just reading um, an interview with um, the guys from Toto, or the backing band, or part of yeah. the backing band on that album. Yeah, you know, beside my, beside Rob Temperton, Michael himself, Brothers Johnson from the 70s, the funk band, and Toto. And yeah. uh, Lukather is actually the guy. I know people, lo- I love Beat It. Everybody loves Beat It, Van Halen solo, but actually it's Luke who is playing. He didn't, I don't think he wrote the riff, but he's playing the riffs. So it's like oh, his yeah. tone, that that main riff of Beat It is is uh, Steve Luke there, which is incredible. Yeah. Van Halen, he just came in and did the solo. Just ripped the solo and apparently yeah. it was like two takes. Of course it was. Which is awesome also, but I mean, yeah, oh, so freaking Toto. 
Right. I know, dude. I mean, a lot of people only, you know, it's a shame in America that people really only know them for the radio stuff like Rosanna and Africa. But like, you know, hold the line. And uh, Toto is an incredible rock band and almost a progressive rock band, actually. Um, they were that good musically. Yeah. Jeff Porcaro is one of my favorite drummers ever. <sighs> Definitely. Sick. Awesome. He's so sick, right? Um, yeah. Such fun stuff. Yeah, man. I think my first vinyl was like, kiss but like i got you know it was like a birthday present i kiss a uh, rock and roll over so like i'm old and that was like right when it came out so yeah you know that it makes a lot of sense actually and uh but yeah well, thriller, I got thriller a lot of when people, it came out yeah thriller uh, thriller is a lot of people's <laughs> first record and the first one they <laughs> still have and the first one they remember so all good man all good um obviously you know this has been a tough time probably i imagine a very uh you know the longest time you guys have been off completely off the road or no shows. And, and again, if you have regular crew people, tour managers, sound people, merch, I'm so sorry for them. And they probably lost a lot. What is the climate like in uh, Sweden? Do you guys think you're going to get back to some shows or big festivals or tours at some point this year or? Well, I don't know. Uh, we don't have any like staff. We don't have any tour managers or anyone who is affected because we're not playing. Uh, only us so we're good obviously it's it sucks that we can't play but we're not like dependent on it we're not known as a live band we don't play that often we don't tour that often and i mean we'd like to play and we'd like to play this year definitely we were booked to this and uh, we're booked on this um, festival that was supposed to be last spring obviously it was postponed at several times i think hopefully it's gonna happen this fall but who knows and that's here in stockholm so right well okay. best of luck best of luck yeah. to us all I, ho I hope it uh turns around fast as possible it seems like we're getting a little bit better here in america not great yet but better than we were um and uh you know obviously continued safety and wellness to everybody just uh for a final thought because i, I love to satisfy a curiosity obviously you know beside music what have you been doing with this time working family any cool hobbies read a good book saw a good movie uh, anything like that well <clears throat> i've been spending most of my time at home last spring i was furloughed from my job so i didn't work anything i was just at home getting paid and couldn't really go anywhere so like everybody else uh, yeah then uh, i was actually let go so i've been at home since then also and this would have been a great time to like write music and get like stuff done but this has been one of the most or least creative times of my life, probably. I don't know why, but I, I just haven't been very inspired. Obviously, we've been working on this, you know, finishing the album and the artwork and all that. But uh, no, I've been watching movies and TV series and listening to music reading pretty much the whole time all right you guys stay entertained and stay sharp mentally and creatively um yeah man again i i hope uh this thing turns around it's a weird pickle to be in but i'm yeah. super stoked for this album thank you for making this album thank you and the guys and the thank you for, for putting me. it out yeah man it's been a pleasure to chat with you i i hope yeah. next time i'm either over there or you're over here and we do it in person at one of those festivals or something and uh yeah i hope everybody checks out a busy trip and riding easy records